Okay. Okay, uh, let's pray. Yeah. Okay. Father, we we thank you, Lord, for this day, God. We thank you for this time. We thank you for um, God uh, for the privilege that you've given us, Lord. For each one of us, Lord, you've called us to be salt and light, Lord, to be people of influence, to be people who be impactful, Lord. Not because we are, not because of our own strength or anything that we possess, God, but Lord, because of you by your spirit, Lord, by your work in us, Lord. Father God, we, we come at this time into your mighty hands, this course especially into your mighty hands, Father God. We pray that you would speak to us, Lord, that you would um, change perspectives and uh, enable us, Lord, to, to be the salt and light, Lord, uh, in the best way possible, Father God. Lord, to be your spokespeople, God, wherever you have placed us uh, strategically, God, uh, you don't make any mistakes, and so, your God, you placed us in such environments, God, where you're looking to us to be your spokespeople, God, to be people of influence and to be people of impact. We thank you for this privilege, Lord. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' matchless name. We pray, Amen, Amen. Okay, so welcome to the uh, the preaching class. You know, biblical preaching, and uh, and of course. We'll, be we'll first practice and then we'll preach, right? Uh, that's what it is. Okay, let me just share the yeah online students. The notes are always already available, so you can um, download that from as usual from the classroom section, and um, and uh, download it and use it. And uh, yeah, for our class, I will of course um, share screen as well. Okay. So, um, you know, in 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 this in this course, uh, we are looking at this whole aspect of um, preaching or biblical preaching. Okay, we 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 see that. Okay, uh, in in scripture, we see that um, preaching is the form of communication of the gospel. Okay, so. The, way, the most common thing, like people went, they preached, they communicated, they proclaimed, they shared the gospel, and people were born again, and uh, we see that over and over and over again. Okay, so so we're going to look at um, this aspect of communication of God's word, this aspect of communication of the gospel, which is preaching. Okay, and uh, so this. The technical term for that is homiletics. Um, we're going to look at the meaning of it as well. Okay, but I just want to, um, you know, as we look at preaching, uh, you know, many of us, you know, so, uh, when we think of preaching, we say, okay, that's not for me, or some of us say, okay, that is for me, because in our own minds, in our own understanding, we have a picture of what preaching is, right? Because Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. After Sunday, we are exposed to a lot of messages which are being preached, and now, of course, we have a lot of messages which are, you know, which we are exposed to digitally and online and so on. So, we we see that we see there is a preacher, and we see a message that is being preached, and so we we look at that, we are familiar with that, and then we say, okay, that is not for me. Right? Some of us say, okay, that is for me, but then. Some of us could could say hey, that is not for me. You know, I'm called to do something else, right? So it, it helps us to understand what is this preaching all about. Okay, you look at the term. Right? Uh, preaching simply means to preach. Simply means to proclaim, to announce, right? To so we see in the Word of God that people preached the gospel. They proclaimed the good news. That is what it. That is what it means. Simply put, so you're proclaiming something. To proclaim is to announce, to declare, um, to you know, call attention to something. Okay, so that is what it is. Okay, and of course there are various aspects of it. 
when we look technically when we look at it okay there is this preaching there is a teaching and different kinds of preaching and so on so all that is there but at the outset at the very core of it this is what it is to proclaim something right and this proclamation is not for some people it's for all people unfortunately <laughs> right when we look at uh, let's go there you know let's look at matthew matthew's gospel last chapter last verse okay so we look at the lord jesus commissioning his disciples and uh, yeah so we're looking at matthew 28 verse 18 all authority has been given to me on heaven in heaven and on earth so this is the lord jesus speaking and he's saying in verse 19 go therefore and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit teaching them to observe all things that i have commanded you and lo i am with you always even to the end of the age okay so the lord is saying okay, this is what all authority has been given to me and and therefore you go in other words he's saying you know i'm commissioning you with the all authority that has been given to me i'm sending you okay i'm 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 with that authority i'm sending you and he also says you know i'm always with you i i'm with you with this authority with this kingdom authority i'm with you till the end of the age that's how it ends but before that he says go into all the nations preach the gospel to every creature um and making you know make disciples of the nations baptize them in the name of the father son of the holy spirit and teach them to observe all that i have commanded you so this commission is for all disciples right it's for all people who say okay i am a follower of christ okay now how do we proclaim where do we proclaim that could differ right it could be in a church it could be behind a from behind a podium now that could differ so all or all of us called to be proclaimers yes without a doubt yes okay so so don't disqualify yourself and say uh, that is for someone else that is for full time ministry that is for you know those who are in church no 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 we are all all of us are called to proclaim the gospel okay we are looking at one aspect of proclamation and yes god will use us in this aspect also okay to preach god will use us now the the audience could differ it could be a church like right? it could be a you know it could be an office setting it could be a marketplace setting like how god used paul in athens and we you know we've been studying about that in church on sundays and so that setting that environment the con the audience could differ but all of us are called to proclaim all of us are called in in other words all of us are called to preach right okay so when we look at preaching you know we're just looking at the overview you know we are proclaiming something let's look at this verse you know one additional verse that we see is um we look at uh, first peter okay first peter chapter 2 verse 9 okay first peter chapter 2 verse 9 okay it says but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation his own special people okay so this is what he's saying you know you are all this what are you a uh, chosen generation okay a uh, royal priesthood which means kings and priests okay or queens and priests <laughs> a holy nation his own special people okay he's saying you you belong to me you're special and he says that i'm giving you this identity i'm giving you this uh, you know this position and i'm I, you know we are in this relationship and call that you may proclaim okay what do you proclaim that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light you know you were not a people but now you are the people of god you had not obtained mercy but now you have obtained mercy so he's saying oh, there's a shift in identity there's a shift in relationship there's a shift in even you know the distance from which we worship everything has changed therefore you know you are called to do this you are called to proclaim the praises 
Okay, and that word praises it means to proclaim the virtues or characteristics of Him, like the attributes of Him who called you out of darkness into light, right? Who was who had, who had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy, and so He has called you and He's given you this. You are called. So all of us are called to proclaim. All of us are called to proclaim His virtues or His characteristics. Okay, so which means that. Um, in order to proclaim, okay, it's good for us to learn, okay, and have an understanding of how do I proclaim, how do I communicate this, right? Uh, some natural or some, you know, some fundamental things about the communication process in terms of language, in terms of, you know, now how important it is to minister the word. And in order to minister the word, we also need to learn and study the word of God. Right, so what are different approaches to studying the Word of God? What are different ways by which we can study the Word of God? You know, we're going to look at that, and also the different kinds of sermons. You know, what are the kinds of, you know, the methods by which you can actually proclaim or share the Word of God? So we're going to look at all that. Okay, so sometimes people say, okay, I don't have the ability to speak. Right, I don't have the ability to. Communicate. I can't speak. Okay, I, I can't speak because why? We, why do we say that? Because we are comparing ourselves to someone who preaches. We say I can't speak like him or her, right? But you know, when you're with friends, you're going non-stop, right? Or when you're talking about your favorite topic, what is your favorite topic? If we, you know, maybe it is food, maybe it is sports, maybe it is, uh, you know, whatever, you know, business or whatever, politics, you know, your favorite topic, you're going non stop. Just think about it, you know, because you're not thinking consciously about, okay, am I speaking in the right way? Am I, you know, using the right words? All that becomes second nature. You are so engrossed in the topic. You're so engrossed in the topic, this is something close to your heart, and you just go all out, right? So, ability to speak. All of us have the ability to communicate. It's just that, hey, this topic, this thing that I need to speak, you know, has it got a hold of me? Or do, do I know enough of it? You know, that is, those are some questions. But all of us have the ability. So, when we look at it, it's not just when we look at biblical preaching, it's not just speaking ability. It's not just that, right? Okay, what is it? It means you as a person. So that's the thing. You as a person, who are you? When we address that, when we are when we say, okay, I'm a man of God, I'm a woman of God, or you know, I'm a student of the word, I'm studying the word, these things that I'm studying, it's it's gone on from mere information to revelation. It's gripped my heart. God has written to me, he's spoken to me, uh, he's written his word upon my heights. It's it it has become a revelation inside of me. And you're a student of the word, you uh, and you're also uh, you know, you're also becoming a person of strong character. When all this comes together, right, then we are actually strong, good communicators, proclaimers of the good news. Right? So who you are as a person also or it's it's more important than even our speaking ability and so on right who we are as a person okay so rather than okay uh, some skill or speaking skill or you know personality ability you know charisma etc it is it, what matters what really matters is our intimacy with the lord right our relationship with Jesus. Now that's going to really matter a lot because out of that comes the message, right? In fact, uh, you know there was this there was this saying, you know, in the in the advertising world, right? The media is the message. What does that mean? That mean that means that you know the the vehicle that we use in order to communicate the message, whether it's newspaper, whether it's you know uh, social media, whether it's reels or whatever, the media itself is a message. Okay, certain messages 
we communicate through handbills right in newspaper inserts yes or no right it could be about some sale it will be some jewelry some sarees being sold some you know some uh, sorry some discount mostly offers discount something happening but if you notice you know maybe it is a let's say a premium brand right like um, you know let's say a car brand you know which is a very high value car any high value high you know priced car like you have a yeah mercedes benz or or a rolls royce have you seen any of those brands put in a newspaper insert why you think about it see it reaches everybody right it reaches everybody you put in a newspaper insert it reaches you know far more people than certain magazines or certain you know certain programs that you want to you know before which you want to put in a newspaper i mean a, a tv ad why why do they do that target audience premium but the newspaper goes to premium set of people also right let's say economics times a business standard or it goes to people who are so why is it why is it that they don't yeah why is it that we don't see newspaper inserts because it's reaching the target audience pastor is because uh, the manufacturing history is already known to the people it's already known to the people yeah does that mean that they don't put ads at all Does i mean it's mean a reputed brand correct it has it, a reputation they have a reputation yeah i think we are close we are close to the answer mm -hmm. they're looking okay target audience is one thing but this newspaper insert reaches the target audience right it goes to everyone is it goes to someone who's having a tea shop newspaper and it also reaches you know the politician the uh, the movie you know the one who's in the movie thing some of the sports person it reaches there why correct but why is it that we don't see a rolls royce advertisement or a mercedes benz advertisement or you know some expensive watch brand like um, rolex why is it that you don't see it in the newspaper insert have you thought of that they are setting themselves apart and uh, yeah jatrud said um, someone someone else said you know reputation okay i think those are things you know uh, abhishek yeah you have a uh, something to say abhishek sagar uh, you want to say something correct answer or not but i have listened once those uh -huh. who have money to buy all these costly things uh -huh. they would don't tend to watch these ads and all they don't tend to watch these ads yeah they don't have time only to watch no but they read newspapers abhishek in fact they read uh, they want to keep you know abreast of what's happening they they read newspapers just think about it okay uh, that statement that we made earlier okay the media is the message the way in which the 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 thing that you use to communicate itself carries a message right so the newspaper insert so that itself is a message it means that when you when somebody looks at the like like um um i forget your name sorry um akil pointed out hey it it, ca it carries information on discounts offers today's thing you know so all that is there so the the way in the the, the newspaper ends the handbill itself is a it's itself is a message it is saying hey this is a discount this is an offer this is uh, you know a promotion uh, today you pick it up and the value of the product 
is actually also intertwined with the the media that you use the method that you use right so why are we looking at that why are we, why did we start that whole conversation you know the person is the message right what we're saying is okay this person might be highly skilled you know have all this speaking ability you know very articulate all that you know wonderful people are just listening spellbound wow but does that all matter you know is is that the everything no the who the person is on the inside that is very very important the vehicle the person is important uh, as important or even more so important than the message the person is important okay the person the life that the person lives is the most important message that the person will ever speak the sermon that he or she will ever speak yeah yeah so that's that's the thing so um okay so i see these online so, so that's the thing you know why we even looked at you know, the media is the message or the person is the message you cannot separate the message from the person right you cannot separate it the message and the person are one and for a message to be authentic for a message to be sincere for a message to be impactful you need to consider the person who is carrying that message yes the person may not be perfect yes the person could be a work in progress but the person matters okay so when we look at biblical preaching we are not just looking at you know how to study the word and how to you know present the word and what are the different ways of preaching all that we will look at but also the most important thing is who we are as a person what is our relationship with jesus because the lord jesus very clearly said in john chapter 15 i think he says that you know uh, without me you can do nothing for i am the vine and you are the branches right and uh, we need to abide with the vine and uh, with him when we abide we are fruitful so everything that we do comes from that place of fruitful from that place of intimacy okay uh, let me just read that verse um john chapter okay john chapter 15 right verse 5 i am the vine you are the branches he who abides in me and i in him bears much fruit for without me you can do nothing so so again we look at it lord i can do a lot of things you know unbelievers do a lot of things unbelievers accomplish a lot of things those who don't have that vine and branch relationship and you know who don't consider that that or esteem that they do accomplish a lot of things but in god's eyes it is not fruitfulness in god's eyes it is it counts as nothing like paul says you know all this learning and everything i counted as rubbish when i com compare it to the light of the knowledge of christ right so so that's the thing so we're going to look at all that okay okay uh when it comes to assessment of the course of course we'll have to quiz this okay so as we look at um um you know this whole thing of biblical preaching it's very important that we look at how do we study the word and also how do we interpret the word of god okay interpreting it we we know that the bible was um, i think you you already gone through that course hermeneutics biblical hermeneutics yes okay so just a review of that okay you you've done it in uh, which semester was it previous semester right? okay the last one okay so it's uh, you already done that so we're just going to kind of um, review some of these things uh, and uh, we're going to just move on right so it's very important you know because paul when he's uh, writing to timothy he says paul uh he's writing to timothy and he's saying rightly divide the word of god okay uh let's look at a couple of verses where he's talking about the importance of uh, do rightly dividing the word of god the importance of giving oneself totally um to the word of god and uh, and so on right so let's look at a couple of verses um yeah okay so uh first timothy chapter 1 verse 3 as i urged you when i went into macedonia remain in ephesus that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine so he's talking about teaching he's talking about the word of god okay first timothy chapter 1 verse 3 
Verse 4, nor give heed to fables and endless genealogies which cause disputes rather than godly edification, which is in faith. And then uh, on and on he goes, right? Then we, we he says, um, when we go to... Um, um, we look at uh, chapter two. Um, sorry, uh, I'm looking at chapter chapter one itself. Um, about verse eighteen. Verse eighteen, he's talking about the word which was delivered to him through prophecies, right? So he says, "This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies made uh, previously concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare." So he's talking about. These prophecies that you receive it, that you keep it, and that you use it. So first he's talking about doctrine, then he's talking about uh, prophecy, and um, and then he also talks about. Um, uh, I'm just looking at another verse. Um, okay, so we we move on to verse chapter four. Okay, chapter four. Uh, he's talking about instructing the believers. So he says in verse 6, chapter 4, verse 6, if you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of faith and of the good doctrine which you have carefully followed. So, you know, he's talking about teaching, he's talking the importance of, you know, good doctrine, and he's warning in chapter 4, he's warning that people will depart in latter times, people will de depart. Um, they are, you know, giving heed to, um, he's saying, deceiving spirits and you know, doctrines of demons and so on, speaking lies and hypocrisy. So you need to make sure that you ground people in the right things, right teaching, right doctrine, you know, right instruction, etc. And then he goes on to say, um, uh, verse 15, okay, chapter 4, verse 15, 1 Timothy. Meditate on these things. Think deeply. Think over and over again. Right? Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them so that your progress may be evident to all. So what is he talking about? He's talking about the word. He's talking about teaching. He's talking about instruction. He's talking about doctrine. He's saying you give yourself entirely to it. Okay? Meditate on these things. And when you, you, know, um, when you give yourself entirely to it, you will make good progress. And your progress, he's talking about spiritual progress. You know, spiritually, you'll grow, and your progress, your maturity will be known to all. It will be evident to all, which means in your ministering, it will come out. When you are you know, dealing with people, it will come out, it will show, and it will be evident. No, you can't hide it. You can't hide your spiritual progress. But what is it dependent on? It's dependent on doctrine, teaching, instruction, in, a, in other words, it depends on Timothy taking the word of God, engaging with the word of God, studying, meditating, receiving the word of God, and rightly dividing the word of God. Okay, because right believing, you know, right teaching goes goes on or leads to right believing. Okay, and right believing leads to right living. Right? So you believe, and it's it's the truth, and your life is impacted. Your life changes. You so you live right, right. But otherwise, it your life is you know life is you're not living right because you believe wrong because you've received wrong. Okay, so so the importance of right believing. So over and over again, you know, you see that in Second Timothy also, right, uh, where he's writing and and he's saying. You know, um, you need to rightly divide the word of God and the importance of, you know, for example, he sees in uh, um, uh, Second Timothy um, chapter two, right? Chapter two: the things that you have heard from me, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Okay, so. He's saying you transfer, you know, whatever you've received, you need to teach others, you commit this, that just see that if you're able to teach others, you know, they, they, have, they, they have the ability to teach others and so on. Okay. So, so we understand that, hey, this is very important. Okay. So what I believe about the word of God is very important. Okay. So how I believe the word of God comes through different filters, right? 
I can take a word out of context, or if I, you know, if I'm not very sure of the grammar and everything, I can, I can just put my own thoughts into it. I can, you know, believe it and so on. So, how I interpret is very, very important. So that's why, you know, even before we get into studying, even before we get into preaching, okay, the interpretation of the word is very important. So, which means we interpret the word according to how we read it. You know, grammatically. How we see it, you know, is it the right grammar with which we are reading, which we are understanding? Uh, what about the history and what about the context? You know, all that is important. Okay, the, so it need, needs to be interpreted um, correctly. Okay, so uh, with regard to that, it needs to be interpreted grammatically. Okay, for example, if you look at the word, okay, there is simple language which is used. Okay. Uh, or complicated language at times, you know, long sentences. But we take it, we we interpret it in the light of the language in which it is written, in the grammar in which it is written, and the way in which it makes sense. We take it. Okay? For example, a simple, you know, John chapter 3, verse 36, like in their notes, right? Scripture, he who believes in the Son has everlasting life. He who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. It's very clear, very plain. Okay. Now, there are no two ways about it to interpret it. Right? John chapter 3, verse 36, he who believes has everlasting life. He who does not believe, the wrath of God abides on him. He shall not see life. Very clear. Acts chapter 1 verse 11, right? Again, the angels talking to the disciples, they say, you know, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up to heaven? The same Jesus who was taken up into heaven will come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. So about the second coming, he's saying, okay, this is how you saw him go up, he will come back again, right? There's nothing hidden. It's very plain, very simple. Okay. But also we know that in some places, there is also figures of speech, right? For example, it says, um, you know, we cannot be, we can't take it literal. Luke chapter 22, verse 19. If you take it literally, there's a problem, right? What is it? Luke chapter 22, the words of Jesus, he's saying, he, he took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to them and saying, this is my body which is given for you. Okay. So the problem is it's bread. Right, and then he's saying, "This is my body." So, how do we interpret it? Is it the flesh of the Lord Jesus? Sorry, it represents the spiritual body of Christ, right? So he's saying, "Okay, you need to be one with it." And literally, you know, when we receive Jesus, we are placed in the we are baptized in the body of Christ, right? So he's saying, "This is my body, which is given for you, and this is my, you know, drink from the cup. This is the, this is my blood, which I shed." So people actually, disciples, when they heard it, they, you read it, and then you see that um, some of them went back. They said, "This is too hard." You know, we are vegetarians, and here we are, <laughs> you know, probably they thought like that. You know, it's like too hard. These guys are cannibals. What is it? Eating the flesh and drinking the blood of another human being. And, you know, probably they thought all that. But we know that he's, Jesus is not giving a literal meaning. When he says those words, he's saying, okay, hey, this is not literal. It is, it is figurative. It is spiritual in nature. Right? So when, when churches take it literally, it becomes a different you know, uh, meaning altogether, it becomes heretical. It doesn't mean that we should not revere the board, the, the you know, the bread and the and the wine and and what it talks about the communion. We we need to understand that we don't. It's not we being irreverent, but we're not considering that as flesh and blood. It does not mean that when I take communion, that hey, I'm ingesting Jesus. No, it does not. Right. Right. Then. You know, Mark chapter 1, verse 15, Then all the land of Judea and those from Jerusalem went out to him and were all baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. Okay, All of land of Judea. Okay? It means that, you know, when you see the people, when you see the population, well, the majority of them went. 
that is what it means because they were those who did not believe there were those who they were those who opposed right so so that is what it that is that is what it means okay right okay then if a passage com has symbols okay symbols meaning it it talks about something but it has a deeper meaning, just like how you would look at a parable. Jesus taught a parable, and that word which was sown on the ground, a very agricultural example, we know that he was, and he, in fact, in that passage itself, he gives an explanation of what it is. He's not talking, guys, I'm not talking about, you know, sowing and, you know, agriculture and giving you a botany lesson, but it's actually a deeper truth that I'm talking about. So there are passages like that. So we need to understand, okay, this is symbolic. What does it mean? And many, in many cases, we see that the symbols are explained in the Word of God themselves. We don't have to look out for a special, you know, um, special revelation or something outside of the Bible. The, the Bible it's, itself, you know, gives the understanding. Okay, for example, if you look at Revelation chapter 1, okay, Revelation cha chapter 1 talks about those, the lamp, and it talks about you know the Lord. He's moving around uh, on the lamps, and and it talks about the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars, and it gives an explanation, right? It gives an explanation. Um, John says, "This is what I saw," and then the Lord Jesus explains the mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand. He's saying, "John, this is what you saw. The seven stars. This is what they represent." They represent the messengers. They rep represent the angels of the seven churches. You saw those seven lampstands. Oh, Bill, this is what it means. It refers to those seven churches, Ephesus and you know Philadelphia and Thy Thyatira and Sardis and so on. So this is what it means. Okay. So John saw a symbol. The Lord gives the meaning. So in the word of God, we see the both the symbolic and the explanation of the symbolic as well. Okay, so sometimes you know when we interpret it grammatically, all this is there. So we need to be mindful of that. Okay, and not assign some other meaning to those symbols. Right, and and sometimes we might have heard some messages where people assign you know, different kinds of meanings to the symbols that are there. But if we were to remain true to the passage, we see that okay, this is what. This means, you know, so we can't assign some other meaning to the stars, some other meaning to the lampstands, because the Lord very clearly explains this is what it means, right? Okay, so we need to interpret it historically as well, okay, which means as much as possible, right? We take into account, okay, the author, who was the letter written to, or who were the recipients of this. Um, we know that it was written, the Bible, whole Bible itself was written over centuries over millennia thousands of years right so who were the original audience who was was it talking to who were the group of people to whom it was addressed what was the kind of culture you know it helps us right um like for example you know the lord talks about uh, about the holy spirit and i think it's luke chapter yeah luke chapter 11 right luke chapter 11 the lord is talking about um you know Luke chapter 11 and verse 9, right? Uh, ask, seek, knock, right? Uh, what's he, uh, and he? And he goes on to talk about, okay, if a father, if a child asks a father for bread, will he give him a stone? If a child asks, a, you know, if a son asks a father for, for uh, a fish, will he give him a serpent? Will he ask for an egg? Will he give him a scorpion? Okay. So he's talking about something that is valuable, something that is not valuable okay. and in that culture okay now if you go to thailand okay they have something called a night market food market what is sold there some kinds of food which the jewish people won't eat you know this audience won't eat serpents are there right scorpions are there and they are considered very tasty food, edible. Okay, so now for them, it'll be a confusion. Hey, if you ask for a egg and uh, give him a scorpion, why scorpion is good only, right? 
so for a, you know if if you have that mindset and say egg oh scorpion is actually better right so then you're a little bit so when you interpret it you're interpreting according to that culture you're saying oh for that culture it was very offensive i will never have anything to do with scorpion i'll never have you know it will never come to a dinner table right and serpents and scorpions are actually referred to the powers of the enemy symbolically right uh, look chapter 10 verse 19 right same you know just chapter before that we see that behold i give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy right so we see that so the for their mind said okay it's something they're not to be dealt with is a power of the enemy symbolically etc so we need to understand the culture okay to whom it is addressed when we interpret it right so to you it may not seem offensive right but to them it is offensive so we understand from that perspective okay so we interpret it uh, according to historically and also taking into consideration the context and the culture okay so we'll stop here and then we'll continue in our next class okay probably we might have some questions we'll try and answer that as well right thank you god bless bye bye